Hello, my name is Scott Goudreau, and I'm going to be talking to you about the work I've been doing in the group of Jeff Lundin on four-wave mixing theory of cylindrical vector beams and optical fiber. So a cylindrical vector beam is a type of structured light, and one important property that structured light has is that it can possess orbital angular momentum, or OAM, in addition to its spin or polarization. Um, this is described mathematically by a helical phase variation around the propagation axis, which comes from the factor I, e to the I L phi, uh, where L h bar is the amount of OAM, and phi is the azimuth of coordinate. Uh, in this diagram, you can see an example of a few OAM containing uh, beams. So the, the uh, helical phase variation is, is, uh, is shown here, and the uh, ring-shaped intensity profile for OAM beams is shown over here. So uh, why is this particularly interesting? So the, the most important part of this is that uh, the spin angular momentum can only take values of plus or minus one h-bar, but the OAM can take any integer value, which means that this greatly expands the information content that a photon can hold, which is, uh, of course, of, of um, considerable interest in communication. So cylindrical vector beams are a non-separable combination of spin and OAM. What this means is that the polarization of a CV beam will vary across the, uh, the transverse profile of the beam. So here are some examples. You can have a radial mode, which, um, which has the polarization always pointing away from the center of the beam. The azimuthal mode, where the polarization uh, is, is directed around the beam axis. And these more complicated hybrid modes. You may be familiar with the terminology uh, where the radial mode is called TM01, azimuthal is TE01, and the hybrid modes are HE21 even and odd. So these are, are, are interesting as well because they're eigenmodes of a weakly guiding or low index difference circular fiber. And this is just a standard telecom fiber. Um, so as an example of how the, uh, the radial mode is composed from spin and OAM, uh, so here is a, a beam with spin of plus one indicated by the, the polarization uh, arrows here. This one has spin of minus one or polarization of, of uh, you know, left and right circular polarization. Um, and the OAM uh, represented by the phase diagram in the corner of these, uh, these modes. And if you add these together, you get the radial mode. If you were to subtract them, then you would get the azimuthal mode. And if you were to use modes with the spin and OAM aligned instead of anti-aligned as these ones are, you would get the two hybrid modes. Um, so a bit about why cylindrical vector beams are interesting. I mentioned this uh, a bit before, but um, so uh, mode division multiplexing of OAM beams and uh, also of cylindrical vector modes is, is, of, is of considerable interest for communication uh, because it holds promise for increasing bandwidth. Um, and also, uh, one property that cylindrical vector beams have um, that, that in general OAM beams uh, don't have is rotational invariance. So normally if you wanted to communicate um, and, uh, between, between a sender and receiver uh, and, and send one of these modes uh, from one to the other, you'd have to have them rotationally aligned uh, if you're working with a mode that's not rotationally invariant. Uh, but if it is a CV mode, then you can um, you, you don't have to maintain this alignment in order for the, for the communication to, to succeed. And so in the case of uh, quantum key distribution, uh, you can perform alignment-free quantum key distribution using these modes, as was done um, in this, this um, uh, article from 2014 in PRL uh, by Valone et al. On, on free space quantum key distribution using uh, these modes, rotation invariant modes. So. Um, on to the, the nonlinear optics part of, of, uh, of this talk. So um, I mentioned, so this is about four-wave mixing. So four-wave mixing of cylindrical vector beams. Um, so, so it's of, of interest for, uh, uh, first of all, because it's a theoretically and experimentally unexplored topic. And I say four-wave mixing here, but in fact, uh, there's been very little work in any uh, uh, for any nonlinear optical process on cylindrical vector beams, uh, not just four-wave mixing. Um, and studying nonlinear optics of, of these modes and fibers is, is of great interest because one major bandwidth limiter in multimode communication is nonlinear crosstalk between the modes. So understanding how these modes can interact with each other 
um, in fibers through through nonlinear processes such as four-way mixing is, is of great interest. Uh, here is uh, here are just some some diagrams, so an energy level diagram of four-way mixing. If you need reminding for how that how that works, so two pump beams enter a chi three material, um, and the signal and idler uh, emerge. And the signal and idler in general are, are have different frequencies, and in the case uh, in this case there can be um, uh, there can be uh, a difference in in spatial mode as well so the main question that's being asked here is if you have pump beams in a certain m spatial mode and in this case uh, a CV mode say the radial mode what modes can come out as the signal and idler mode can you have a conversion from one type of mode to another can the signal and idler have different modes if the two pumps are the same uh, those are the sort of questions that we're asking here and the third point is actually the reason why this project was started in the first place, which was as an attempt of producing uh, cylindrical vector mode entangled photons. So if you, uh, uh, if you have the right conditions, the signal and idler modes that emerge from this process can be entangled in their, uh, in their spatial mode. All right, so uh, some, some previous work that's of, of, of importance to this theory is uh, this paper from, from 2004 by Lynn and Agarwal on vector theory of four-wave mixing. Uh, so they um, developed the theory of four-wave mixing uh, to include uh, uniform polarization, uh, and, and uh, this work kind of builds upon that because uh, as I mentioned before, cylindrical vector beams have a non-uniform polarization, and so this work further expands the theory to include uh, non-uniform polarization. So here's an outline of the theoretical uh, approach that was that was used. Um, so starting with the wave equation, uh, and using four four fields which are assumed to be monochromatic. Uh, for the two the two pump beams and the signal and idler, along with some standard assumptions, so the slowly varying amplitude approximation, uh, the weakly guiding or small index difference approximation, uh, along with of course the uh, the chi three nonlinear polarization, which carries with it its own conditions, so the uh, assumption of Kleinman symmetry, which means that we're neglecting the frequency dependence of chi three, and also the isotropy of the fiber, and both of these together considerably simplify. The um, the chi three tensor, meaning that there's only one uh, unique element uh, after these conditions are applied. And another uh, few points to make as far as this analysis was that this treatment includes cell phase modulation and cross phase modulation for the pump beams, um, but neglects the the same processes for the weaker signal and idler beams, and also neglects uh, pump depletion as well. So with all of this in place, the wave equation can then be used to derive the coupled amplitude equations. Uh, and from the coupled amplitude equations, we can hope to determine selection rules. And by selection rules, I just mean uh, a set of rules to, to answer the question I mentioned before. So which, which uh, mode, pr mode conversion processes uh, are allowed and which are forbidden. So moving on to the results, so here is uh, here are the coupled amplitude equations for the signal and for the idler if you exchange the S and I subscripts in this equation. The part here out front before the brackets is standard, so the more interesting part are these, uh, these three S terms. And these, each of these is an integral that looks like this. And the, this, so this is a, a product of the four mode fields, so each of these M's is the, the mode field for the corresponding, um, the corresponding beam. So each of these, the product of each of these mode fields integrated over the, the transverse area. Um, so as an example uh, for the first term, so uh, there are some conjugates applied to the subscripts, and that just means that these conjugates are to be applied to the fields themselves, so each of the, the respective m's. So as an example, here is the first, uh, the first of the three s terms, um, and this is what that looks like. And after evaluating all three of these, that leads to the selection rules for determining allowed and forbidden processes. So before I can get directly to the selection rules, I need to establish some notation. So first of all, uh, we're going to describe a beam with OAM of L and spin of S by this LS ket. And with that, uh, the 
the four um, the, these four cylindrical vector modes for for given uh, L and S can be described by uh, by these equations. So this one I already uh, presented earlier in the talk as an example. So combining two anti-aligned OAM uh, beams and adding them together, you get the radial mode. This is the equations, the corresponding equations of the other three modes. And combining those together, you can express them as this. So CV uh, indexed by big L and big S. So these these should be taken as as indices um, rather than as angular momenta because uh, looking at these equations, you can see that the CV modes don't have a definite value of uh, OAM or spin. So these are, are indices, not angular momentum, although they do relate back to the angular momenta. And this equation is just the sum of two, um, two of these OAM beams. So one here and one here with some uh, phase factors out front. The lambda that appears in the exponent here is just the sine of L. So uh, after that's established, these are the selection rules. So after some algebraic manipulation, uh, these selection rules uh, came out of the of the uh, the S integrals. Uh, this at this point we assume that the pumps beams are identical in spatial mode and frequency uh, because it simplifies the analysis. Uh, so the pump beams are the same, and all of these modes, at least on this page uh, or this slide. Uh, correspond to an absolute value of L being 1. The selection rules do allow for processes with L being uh, th having values other than 1. This is just for example. Um, so the first of the selection rules is the trivial process. This isn't particularly interesting. This just says that whatever the pump input is, the signal and either can have the same mode. So radial can go to radial. Uh, not, not too surprising. Uh, the second selection rule is, is a non-trivial one, so this says that if you have um, the pumps being radial, those can convert to azimuthal or the other way around, and the two hybrid modes can convert between each other as well. Uh, the third selection rule is even more non-trivial in that uh, the modes can change, but also if as you notice here that the L's are different, they're not all the same anymore. Um, so this says, as an example, the radial, uh, the, so two radial uh, inputs here can lead to radial and uh, hybrid, or azimuthal and the other hybrid mode, with the L's also being uh, changed in the process. So um, this prompts some questions for future work. So uh, I mentioned before that the, the L and S uh, indices that the selection rules are in terms of don't correspond directly to angular momentum, which means that the physical meaning of the selection rules isn't immediately obvious. We were hoping that uh, angular momentum conservation would emerge from this from this uh, calculation in a more natural way, and it likely is. There's likely a um, uh, a statement of, of conservation in there somewhere, uh, but obtaining it will require a little bit more thought. Of course, experimentally verifying this work is, is important, so uh, the goal is to use a vortex fiber, which looks like this and has an index profile that supports um, OAM-containing uh, modes uh, in order to experimentally verify uh, these selection rules, uh, and also back to the original goal, which was to produce uh, cylindrical vector mode entangled photon pairs, and so being able to do that would also be uh, something to work towards. So I'd like to uh, acknowledge um, Dr. Ibrahim Karimi from the University of Ottawa for some, uh, some helpful discussions on the subject and also the following organizations for funding and support. And uh, in summary, so uh, we have uh, obtained a general expression for the four-wave mixing intensity for CV beams uh, and weekly guiding fibers and under the approximations that I mentioned earlier. And this represents the first full theory of a nonlinear optical process with cylindrical vector beams. And uh, a set of simple selection rules were obtained for the Fourier mixing process. And this shows that some non-trivial processes are allowed. And um, so with that, uh, thank you for listening.